Hello everyone, welcome to the fifth video of the AI by Hand series and today we are going to learn about artificial neurons. Artificial neurons are also known as perceptrons or artificial nodes which are the basic building blocks of artificial neural networks or ANNs. They are computational units that mimic the behavior of biological neurons in the human brain. An artificial neuron has several components. For instance, if we try to draw something here, it has multiple inputs. So for example, x1, x2, dot dot xn, and the inputs are generally the numerical values representing features of the data being processed. Each input is associated with a weight, w, so w1, w2, and then Wn, which determines the influence of that particular inputs on the neuron's output. These weights can be adjusted during the learning process, allowing the neuron to learn from the input data. Then, the weighted sum of the inputs is computed by multiplying each input by its corresponding weight and then summing up the products. So, this is the weighted sum. In addition to the weighted inputs, artificial neurons often include bias term which allows the neuron to adjust its output independently of the input value. The weighted sum is then passed through an activation function which determines the neuron's output based on its input. From the previous video of the activation function, we know that activation function introduces nonlinearity into the system. The last component of an artificial neural network is the output, which is the result of the activation function applied to the weighted sum of the inputs. The output is then passed to the other neurons as input. Artificial neurons, along with their connections between them and the learning algorithms used to adjust their weights, form the basis of artificial neural network, which have been successfully applied to a wide range of tasks, including pattern recognition, classification, regression, and more. So let's move on to the first exercise. From the video of linear layer, we know that this x1 will get multiplied by this w1, and then we need to add the product with x2 multiplied by w2, and then we need to add the bias. So 3 into 1, 3, plus 1 into 1, 1. So 3 plus 1, 4, and then minus 5. So we will get minus 1 here. So this minus one will pass through the ReLU activation function and from the previous video of activation function, we know that we will get the output from ReLU as zero here because ReLU returns zero if it gets a negative number. So if we try to fill up this diagram, x1 is three, x2 is one, and then this linear layer will give us the output of minus one and this minus one will go through the ReLU function and we will get the output as zero. The next exercise, so 3 into 1, 3 plus 1 into minus 1, 3 minus 1 is 2, and then 2 plus 0 is equal to 2. As we are getting the positive number, really we will return the same number, so we will get 2. So you can fill up the diagram, x1 and x2 is 3 and 1, and then ReLU will give us the output as 2, and the output of this layer is also 2. The next example, so 2 into 2, 4, then plus one, minus 1 into 1. So 4 minus 1 is equal to 3, and then we need to add the bias, which is 1. So 3 plus 1 will give us 4, and this 4 will pass through the value function, and we will get the output as 4. So you can try to fill up this diagram as the previous example. So 2 minus 1 from x1 and x2, and then the output is 4, and the value function will give us the output as 4 also. Again, 2 into 2, 4, 4 plus 1 into minus 1, so minus 1, so 4 minus 1 will give us 3, and then 3 minus 5 will give us minus 2. So this ReLU function will return 0 from minus 2. So x1 and x2 is 2 minus 1, then the output is minus 2, and then we will get 0 from the ReLU. So again, 4 into 1, 4, plus 2 into minus 1, so minus 2, 4 minus 2 is 2, and then minus 1. So 2 minus 1 will give us 1. Now, if we use the three-level quantization of the sigma r function, we know from the previous video of activation function that if we get one here, we need to use this range. Then we will get 0.5 here. So x1 and x2 is four and two, then the output of the linear layer is one, and this one will give us 0.5 from the sigma function. 
So 3 into 2, 6 plus 4 into minus 1 minus 4. So 6 minus 4 is equal to 2. 2 plus 0 is 2. So here we will get 2. And the sigmoid function, we need to use this range. So for 2, the sigmoid function will return as 1. So we will write 1 here. So if we try to fill up this, it will be 3 and 4 from x1 and x2. And then the output of the linear layer will be 2. And the output of the sigmoid function will be 1. Then 2 into 1, 2 plus 5 into 0. 0, so 2 plus 0 is 2, then 1 into 1, 1, so 3, 2 plus 1, 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, so we will get 1 here, and the value will return 1, as it is a positive number. So, x1 is 1, x2 is 5, x3 is 1, and the output of the linear layer will be 1, and this 1 will pass through the ReLU function, and we will get 1 here. Again, 2 into 1, 2, plus 5 into minus 1, minus 5, so 2 minus 5 is minus 3, and then 1 into 0 minus 2 plus 2 will give us minus 1. And the real function will return 0 as we are getting a minus number. So x1, x2, and x3 is 2, 5, 1. And the output of the linear layer is minus 1. And the final output is 0. Again, 2 into 1, 2. Then 5 into minus 1, minus 5, plus 1 into 0. So 2 minus 5 will give us minus 3. And plus 2, we will get minus 1. So if we are using the three level quantization of sigmoid function, we need to use this strength. So for minus one, we will get 0.5. So if we try to compare these two examples, so these two examples are almost the, the same. So for the ReLU function, we are getting zero. And for the sigmoid function, we are getting 0.5. So x1 is two, x2 is five, and x3 is one. And then the output of the linear layer is minus one and the final output is 0.5. The signal from the signal function. The next exercise we need to find out these values. So we are using these two and this column. So 4 into 0 plus 6 into 1. So 6 minus 1, 5. So we are getting 5 here, and the ReLU will also return us 5. So x1 and x2 is 4 and 6. And the output of the linear layer is 5 here and 4 and 3. So for 4 and 3, the ReLU will return us 4 and 3. So 4 and 3. And for 5, the ReLU will return for 5. This example, we have to find out these values. So we are going to multiply these two with this column. So 5 into 1, 5, plus 2 into minus 1, minus 2. 5 minus 2 will give us 3. And then 3 minus 2 is 1. So we will get 1 here, and the ReLU will return 1. So you can fill up this diagram as the previous example. So x1 will be 5, x2 will be 2. And then the output of the linear layer will be 5, 1, and 4. And the final output will be 5 and 1 and 4 also, as we are getting a positive number in the real function. For the next exercise, we have to find out this value. So 3 into 1, 3 plus 2 into minus 3 minus 6. So 3 minus 6 is minus 3. So we will get minus 3 here. So minus 3 will go through the real function and we will get 0 here. So x1 and x2 will be 3 and 2. And the output of the linear layer will be 1, minus 1 and minus 3. And then the final output will be 1, 0 and 0 this exercise, we have to find out these values. So we are going to multiply this row with this column. So 3 into 1, 3 plus 1 into 1, 1, 3 plus 1, 4, plus 2 into 1, 2. So 4 plus 2 will give us 6 and we will get the output of the ReLU function as 6. So x1, x2, x3 will be 3, 1 and 2. And the output of the linear layers will be 6, 4 and 3 respectively. And the final output from the ReLU function will be 6, 4 and 3. So we have to find out this value. For this value, we have to multiply this row with this column. So 2 into 1, 2 plus 3 into 0, 0. So 2 plus 0 is 2. And then 4 into minus 1, minus 4. So 2 minus 4 will give us minus 2. We will get minus 2 here. So for minus 2, we will get 0 from the ReLU function. Next example, we have to find out this value. So we are going to multiply this row with this column. So 5 into 1, 5 plus 2 into minus 1, minus 2 plus minus 3 into 0, 0. So we will get 3 here. And as we are getting a positive number, ReLU will also return 3 here. x1, x2, and x3 will be 5, 2, and minus 3. And this will go through all the processing of linear layer. And we will get the intermediate output as minus 1, 8, and 3. And the ReLU function will return us 0, 8, and 3 here. For the next exercise, we have to find out this input to find out the final output as 5. So if it assume that as p, so 1 into p plus 1 into 2 plus bias, which is 0, equal to 5. If we solve this equation, we will get p is equal to 3. So this will be 3. Then if we try to fill up this diagram, x1 will be 3 and x2 will be 2. This will go through the linear layer. 
and we will get the output as phi linear from the linear layer and the ReLU function will return as phi also. We have to find out the value of x2 in this example. So 4 into 1 plus minus 1 into x2 plus bias, which is 0, will give us minus 1. So if we solve this equation, we will get x2 is equal to 5. So this will be 5 here. So x1 is 4 and x2 is 5. And then the output of the linear level will be minus 1. And the real function will give us the output as 0. Now we have to find out the value of w1 in this exercise. So 3 into w1 plus 5 into 1 will give us 2. So if we solve this equation, we will get w1 is equal to minus 1. So this will be minus 1. So x1 is 3, x2 is 5, and here minus 1 will be multiplied with x1, and the output of the linear layer will be 2. And these two will go to the real function, and the final output will also be 2. In this exercise, we have to find out the value of w2. So 3 into 1, plus 2 into w2 and the bias which is 0 will give us minus 1. So if we solve this equation, we will get w2 is equal to minus 2. So it will be minus 2. Then x1 is 3, x2 is 2 and this x2 will be multiplied by minus 2 here. So the output of the linear layer will be minus 1 and this will go through the ReLU function which will give us the final output as 0. In this example, we have to find out the value of the bias. So 3 into 1, 3 plus 2 into minus 1, minus 2, which will give us 1. So we have to add something so that we can get the output as minus 1. So 1 plus bias will give us minus 1. So the bias will be minus 2. So we need to add minus 2 here. So x1 is 3, x2 is 2. And we have to add minus 2 here to get the output as minus 1. And the real function will return us 0. In this example, we have to find out the value of the first input x1. So x1 will get multiplied by 1, then 1 into 2, which is 2, plus 1 into 3, which is 3, will give us 1. We are not adding the bias as it is 0. So if we solve this equation, we will get x1 is equal to minus 4. So this will be minus 4. So x1 is minus 4 here, x2 is 2 here, x3 is 3 here. and this will give us the output of the linear layer as 1 and the real function will take this one and give us the output as 1. In this exercise, we have to find out the value of x2. So 2 into 1, 2 plus x2 into minus 1, which is like minus x2, then 1 into 1, 1. And we don't need to add the bias as it is 0, will give us the output as 0. So let's solve this equation. We can get x2 is equal to 3. So we have to put 3 here. So x1 is 2, x2 is 3, and x3 is 1. This will pass through the linear layer, and we will get the output 0. And as we are getting 0, it will return us 0 also. In this example, we have to find out the value of w3. So 4 into 1, 4, plus 1 into 1, 1. And then 3 into w2, and the bias is 0, will give us minus 1. So if we solve this equation, we will get w3 is equal to minus 2. So we put w3 is equal to minus 2. So x1 will be 4, x2 will be 1, and x3 will be 3, and this will go through the linear layer, we will get the output as minus 1, whereas this w3 will be minus 2. So x3 will be multiplied by minus 2 here. So the final output will be 0, as railway is getting minus 1 as the input. So for this exercise, we need to find out which activation function has been used to get the final output. So we can see that from the output of the linear layer, like from minus two, we are getting zero. That means if we are getting a negative input, we are getting zero. Because for minus one, we are also getting zero, but for positive, it is unchanged. So the function which is used here is value. Well. And you can fill up this diagram from the previous examples. So x1 is two, x2 is four, and x3 is three. And the output of the linear layer will be minus two, minus one, and two. And the final output will be zero, zero, two. So the function which is used here will be real activation function. In the last example, we also have to find out the activation function used here. So we can see that for minus 2, we are getting 0, but for minus 1, we are getting 0.5. And for a positive number, we are also getting a different value. So if we try to remember the three-level quantization value of sigmoid function from previous examples, we can see that for minus 2, we will get 0 as we divided it in three ranges. For minus one, we will get 0.5, and for two, we will get one here. So we use sigmoid function here. So this will be 
sigmoid. Now filling up the diagram here, x1 is 2, x2 is 4, and x3 is 3. And the output of the linear layer will be minus 2, minus 1, and 2. And the final output will be point 0, 0, 0.5, and 1. So we used sigmoid function here. So this is the end of this video. In this video, we have learned about artificial neuron, which is the base of our artificial neural network. Thank you.